So we human look all different. As you can see from here, many different people and including my small group of students who look different, behave differently, and they are susceptible to uh, different diseases mainly due to this 0.1% difference in DNA sequence, which is of 3 billion base pairs. We have been working on this uh, using this different diversity of DNA sequences, and we are surprised by a famous actress, Angelina Jolie, receiving preventive surgery of her breast based on the uh, identification of BRCA1 mutation in her genome. And that surprised us, but actually tells us that the importance of this genome-based uh, diagnostics. You're looking at an eye which lost the eye vision because of the genetic disease called Abellino corneal dystrophy. If one of your parents have this genetic mutation, you will not be blind. However, if you receive LASIK, you will become blind in two or three years. So diagnostics early is very important. It can be done very easily by swapping some inner cells from your uh, mouse, and then uh, you uh, do the PCR amplification of the DNA region, and then you hybridize it the prepatenancing. Using this technology, we tested more than 440,000 patients who tried to receive LASIK, saved 413 people from becoming blind. Also, you can use it for testing other genetic diseases, such as Wilson's disease, which is caused by accumulation of heavy metal ions, and you lose functions of your brain and liver. So that needs to be identified early in the stage so that the child can be treated with proper medicine. You can apply this diagnostic technology for the identification of exact pathogenic microorganism so that you can administer the right antibiotics without causing antibiotic resistance problems, which is becoming more and more significant and also dangerous. Now, this can be done in more nanotech based way. For example, you can make a, a nano-patterned chip which uses technology called LSPR and then you can use aptama immobilized on the chip which will specifically capture only the specifically designed pathogenic microorganisms. Now you get the very simple way of testing it. We eat vegetables, fruits every day and you probably did it today too. Sometimes these are contaminated with toxic agrochemicals which is not good. Can we test it? Well, yes, you can do it. By the, uh, using nanotechnology, you can make a very inexpensive disposable chip which has immobilized enzyme that can detect such toxic agrochemicals. Not only diagnostics is the application of marrying nanotech and biotech. You can produce something. Based on nanotech, for example, you can identify beautiful metal nanoparticles that can be synthesized by various microorganisms, which is, of course, engineered to accommodate such heavy metal ions and make something useful as shown in this slide. So you can incubate cells with a diverse portfolio of metal ions. You can make quantum dots. You can make metal na na mag magnets. You can make some uh, nanoparticles which have never been synthesized by chemists, but microorganisms are capable of doing it. Now you can have various applications, but you want to mass produce it to make money. How you do that? Well, you're looking at cells which are growing in a bioreactor. You are looking at the highest cell density cultivation, which contains about 400 billion cells per milliliter of bros, which is probably equivalent to filling this room with 500 people and make them uh, live happily for 200 years. You can use high productivity system to produce something such as this one, that is muscle glue protein, which can be used as a water resistant super adhesive. Now you can clone this gene into E. coli, and based on nanotech, you know the structure you want to have. You can have a system that allows production of the strongest natural fiber uh, around, that is spider silk. That is as strong as Kevlar, which is the strongest man-made fiber. You have bulletproof breast applications, parachute ropes. You can have biomedical applications. So actually, applications are endless. Now, to make this, if you look at the DNA sequence, and also amino acid sequence in the protein, it is very nasty. So you cannot allow cells to produce it. Now you can metabolically engineer cells to overproduce this, and eventually you will be able to produce enough amount using high cell density culture, and then you spin them out to get it actually delivered. So marrying nanotechnology and biotechnology not only give you very robust, simple, inexpensive, accurate diagnostics, but also production of very useful, highly functional materials from sustainable resources. Thank you very much.